feel free. Like, because of the way that I have this up on my screen, I can see five people right now. Sure, I could click through and, and go see everyone. Um, but I'm not going to see you if you're like waving your hand at me to, to stop me and ask a question. What's up, Brony? I'm scrolling through. I see you. Um, good, man. Good. Good to see you here. So if, uh, if you have a question, definitely unmute yourself and ask away. And again, in the meantime right now, uh, if you would, please mute yourself just so don't get any feedback or, or background noise on people's stuff. So um, one more time, just don't be afraid to interrupt me and ask questions. All right. So obviously we're going to be talking home fitness program design made easy. Uh, is there anyone, unmute yourself and just say, because I don't think anyone's going to be this. Is there anyone whose gym is still open or actually knows of a gym that's still open? And this is just me being curious. Anyone? I know one guy in Andy's group whose gym is somehow still open that's connected to a chiropractic office or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a chiropractic office next to us that technically does some personal training, and uh, I know they're still open. So, yeah, I think that's the one exception. If you can claim that your personal training is prescribed by a PT, you can still stay open. But point being, I was expecting there to be zero, um, and I think that still kind of is zero. Like, none of us can run our gyms right now. So interesting times, interesting times. We've all had to, to use a completely overused term, pivot and move our in-person training online for all of our clients. Um, not easy, depending on how you look at it, right? There's, there's a lot of challenges here. So when this happened, uh, we had Bill Hartman on as a guest quite a few weeks ago, and he made the comment, no one needs another kettlebell swing technique video. <laughs> Which number one, it's just like, Thank you, because God, if, if you really like, like, if you really want to know, just Google it. Not saying everyone's going to be good. You could make an argument for like, well, I think that my technique's better than what my clients might find. But point being, you don't need to go film that content and you can point them towards the billion things that are already out there and just pick one that you're like, yeah, this is good, good content for my folks. What do our folks actually need? They need help navigating this new problem that they can no longer come to your facility, that they still, as we're going to talk about here in a second, they still have goals. Their goals may have pivoted slightly. Maybe some of this has scared them and it's like they've shifted towards like more of a health mindset where maybe they were a little more performance or just like aesthetics before. But all in all, people still want what, what they want, right? So they need help with plans. They need help with staying consistent. They need help with probably now more than ever um, to stay motivated to actually do something because if anyone's ever tried to work out at home, like I love to work out. Uh, and even though I occasionally use some of my equipment here at home, I've been guilty of for a while, we actually had a bench in one place where I lived and it literally was a really nice clothes hanger for my stuff. <clears throat> and that's someone who loves to work out. Our clients don't love to work out. So it's really easy for them to instead watch Netflix instead open the fridge when they're bored and look for something and grab a drink and grab, you know, their go-to food, whatever. So it's not just about writing programs. It's about writing engaging programs that make people actually excited um, to show up and do it. So we're going to talk all about that stuff today. All right. So <clears throat> what's changed? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's changed? Well, we're all at home, right? Uh, maybe, maybe you're not at home. I mean, if you're like us, you're still working from your gym. So we still have access to our toys, but our clients are at home, right? And I love this quote here from Stephen Covey. There are three constants in life, change, choice, and principles. A lot has changed, not to keep saying that over and over, but come on, a lot has changed in the last few weeks here. And we all have a choice of how we can respond to that. I do know of some gyms who were like, well, we're just going to try and get you know, whatever government assistant, assistance sure, we can okay. get, we're going to try and get um, rent forgiveness from our landlord and, and just hope Jeff, that this all be works right out. Back. He's getting shorts and a t shirt. Todd, can Do you, you have to go potty, Leo? <laughs> I don't have the. Am I good? All right. Um, I get it. I have a toddler. I love it. Uh, Sorry, um, you know, we, we all have a choice in, in how we're going to respond to it. Another choice besides just the one that hopefully, and I'm sure you're on this call, you haven't done it, just laying down and being like, I hope someone helps. Another choice I've seen some people make is like, well, 
we're just going to give our clients live streaming workouts online where everyone's doing the same thing. But is that what you did for your clients before? And if so, okay, like maybe you did large group training and everyone showed up and at 9 a.m. you do this and 10 a.m. you do this and 11 a.m. you do this. Maybe that works. But many of us are personal trainers or small group personal training, semi-private personal training, whatever you may call it, and you delivered completely individualized training for your clients. And now it's like, all right, I want to keep that going. And I, 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 I'm making the choice to keep that going, but I'm running into these problems. And maybe you'll recognize yourself in a few of the problems. Uh, my people have absolutely nothing to work with, work out with at home. Or, or if you're like us, maybe you loaned out equipment in your gym, but you wanted to make it fair that everyone could get some stuff. So people wound up with odd things like just one dumbbell and a band or one kettlebell and a med ball or, you know, whatever random combination of things, not ideal for writing programs, but you still have a choice of taking the time to look at what they have and write a well-rounded program that's still going to get them from what hasn't to what hasn't changed their goal. Maybe their goals changed a little bit, but you still got to do what we've always done. Uncover their goal, look at what we're working with, make a plan, help them execute that plan and adjust accordingly if we need to, right? And really what I'm getting at there at the end of all that are the principles. So we're going to talk briefly about the principles today, but anyone that's seen our stuff before, we go pretty hard at the principles and like uncovering, you know, the, the why of how everything works. But today I'm really going to get more into the tactics of how we apply our principles. So I'm going to make some assumptions that a lot of people on the call know certain things. But again, do not hesitate to unmute yourself and stop me and ask questions at any time if you're like, I have no clue what you're talking about, right? So I don't know if these things are, are actually principles. Whenever I wrote this, I was like, it's really like a list of, of what we believe uh, we need to kind of go through to help everyone apply the tactics of writing individualized programs at home in the face of everything going on. So number one is programs over workouts. Like I just talked about, some gyms are just doing live stream, like, oh, you could jump in, like we're doing it. We have our metabolic conditioning classes, but we're not only offering that. And we're also telling our people, hey, metabolic conditioning is on these days at these times. So knowing that, if you're gonna do it, we recommend doing your customized days these days, right? So it's helping them to see how to actually lay out and, and do their week so that they aren't crushing themselves at home, which leads right into lay out the week. Once we understand and help our people understand how to lay out their week, then we zoom in and we're laying out the day. Now, this isn't one where we'd be like, you could lay out your day like this. This would be the program that you're writing for people or like us, the combination of the program you write for people plus metabolic conditioning and, and spreading stressors across the week. Then we zoom in a little bit more, selecting appropriate exercises, right? And this could become a really time consuming thing. Every single person in your gym has random odd and ends at home. Um, sounds pretty overwhelming, right? But I'm going to show you guys and, and, and some, if, if you're interested in it, you can grab the templates um, to actually go through this stuff. So selecting appropriate exercises, then we'll go in and we'll look at selecting reps and sets. And then we're going to look at simple progression, progression and not getting carried away with like, well, people only have this. So I guess we just need to do hit every day because I don't think that we can load it any heavier. Not exactly. All right. So programs over workouts. Let's look at a program. Was someone gonna jump in? I, sounds like someone unmuted. Question? Good? All right. So programs over workouts. Here is a real yet fictional program because you're gonna see that my name is at the top. Now, I won't lie to you, I'm not technically doing this program. Um, I am still doing full workouts at my gym, the strength action program to be exact. I'm just trying to move this box out of the way so I can see here. Um, but I, I laid out a full six day a week program here so that you could see what this would look like. And it's going to look for anyone who's familiar with our stuff. It's going to look exactly like what we would do for a program like strength action, except for you're going to see exact prescription of what exercises um, sets, reps, everything I'm telling this person myself here to do. So at the top, we got my name, we got what block I'm in, what phase I'm in is highlighted, what my goals are. Of course, get jacked and shredded for summer, <laughs> even with all the craziness of this quarantine. Below that, we've got my workout key. So you can see that I'm going to be doing six days a week. So that's the four different colors that are there. So there's the blue week in week one, 
pink is week two, green is week three, purple is week four. And I'm going to have five different workouts for six days a week. So you can see in week one, I'm going to do workout A, workout B, workout C, workout D, then repeat workout A, then workout E. Um, the next week, it's going to go C, B, A, D, C, E. So to make that, like we're going to actually look at what this is, but pretend that someone was only going to do strength training days and they had an A day and they had a B day. Um, all that I'm really doing is taking my two main strength days and I'm going A, B, A in week one, B, A, B in week two. Um, it's just that I've added in more days here. So let's zoom in or, or, or zoom down and see what that looks like. So workout A is going to be my first strength day. So this is the way that we lay out a normal strength day on our program. I'm going to talk about this in more detail later on when we talk about zooming in and selecting exercises and all that. But you can see that I've got some power stuff here, double skater jump and stick. I've got a core exercise with that, a mobility exercise with that, and I'm doing it for three rounds of however many reps. Then I'm going on to some strength work, RDL with dumbbells, half kneeling single arm press with the dumbbell, standing hip cars. Then we've got uh, three rounds of that. Then we've got 1.5 rep goblet squat, bent over seesaw row with dumbbells, um, eight reps, eight reps on each side, two rounds, and then a conditioning circuit. And if you really look, this program, would assume that someone had access to dumbbells, nothing else, maybe a jump rope if, if they were going to do that in conditioning, but that's, that's all that someone would need is dumbbells for this. If they didn't have dumbbells, we'd be able to modify this, still look at like, all right, well, what's the movement we're getting after here? How, how could we modify this to still make it uh, doable for that person and make the reps and whatever loading strategies we're doing uh, work for their goals. So that's the first day. The second day is a conditioning day. And we're going to talk about, uh, why there could have been a million things here, but basically we have two circuits. We have a four exercise circuit, three rounds of 20 seconds work, 40 seconds rest. After they do three rounds of that, they're going to rest for two to three minutes. Then there's another four exercise circuit, three rounds, 20 seconds work, 40 seconds rest. So pretty short, straight to the point. Um, not killing themselves. They're, they're resting 40 seconds out of every minute total here. The next day on the program, workout C is going to be their next strength day. So if you remember, I said, uh, a, C, uh, and then A is going to be repeated later in the week. And then the next week, it's going to be C will actually start the week. So that's why you see in the pink column here, 7 slash 11 at the top. That's the seventh uh, session and the 11th session. It's six days a week, so 7 starts week two. Um, so you can see here, it's going to be very similar to that workout A. We've got some power, some core, some mobility. Then we've got our main strength work. Then we've got um, some assistance work here with contralateral, single leg RDL with dumbbell, standing overhead press with dumbbells, and then conditioning, right? So pretty well-rounded day. Then we would go to workout D, another conditioning day, similar to the other one. The other one, if you remember, was four exercises, three rounds, 20 seconds work, 40 seconds rest. Now we have three exercises, four rounds, and a little longer work, a little uh, shorter rest, so 25 seconds work, 35 seconds rest. Again, I'm just introducing you to this program here. Don't get hung up on like, well, why did he do that? And, um, you know, whatever, whatever questions you have, that's cool. I want you to have those questions. Keep them in mind, just introducing things. Remember how I said we go A, B, C, D. Now we're going to zoom back over to workout A. If you notice in the blue column, it says one slash five at the top. That's because it's the first and the fifth session uh, of the week. Okay. So we'd repeat that day, then we would zoom down and over to workout E, our next conditioning day. And the main thing I want you to notice here is that we have a continuous circuit for eight minutes at the top. Continuous circuit for eight minutes at the top. Um, it's a countdown approach. So for eight minutes, they're going to do one kettlebell rack squat, kettlebell dead bugs with paws, RDL with dumbbells, one and a half rep push up, bent over row with dumbbells. They're going to do 10 reps, excuse me, 10 reps of everything. After, as soon as they finish that round, they're going to go nine reps of everything, eight reps, however low they count down in the eight minute uh, time allotment. And again, RPE is in the column there is both like a session RPE as well as their exercise choice, but they're not killing themselves with this. We're not going for like a CrossFit wad and being like, you know, AMRAP bro, like get as much as you can. Still going for quality movement here. Then they're going to rest for two to three minutes and then they're going to do another uh, conditioning circuit, four exercises four rounds, 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. So if you remember, first day of conditioning was 20, 40, 
Second day of conditioning was circuits of 25, 35. And now the um, fixed, fixed, which is fixed time work, fixed time rest on this day is 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. So our work time kept going up and our rest time kept going down. And we'll talk about why that is. And then at the bottom, we have a cool down built in. Okay. So that's my program. Honestly, who knows? Maybe I will do this program. Um, looks pretty fun. So as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff filled in, but the main thing is I have my strength training taken care of. I have my conditioning taken care of. I have my cool down and, and, and rest days and everything built in. So I have my recovery taken care of in there. Right. But I was purposely slowing down and talking about how we were doing 20, 40, and then 25, 35, and then 30, 30 on the conditioning. Because the main thing I want you to see is that like it, it's, in terms of, I actually built out these slides in, in Canva. So I didn't do like an actual line representing, it's, it's not completely linear, but the main thing is the week starts with less volume and works to more volume. It starts with higher intensity and it works to lower intensity. So just think about that. Like if we were to look at the conditioning days, um, 20 seconds of work out of each minute, right? That's gonna be less volume of, of work going on, which means that I can work at a higher intensity for those. Fast forward to the last day of the week, continuously moving for eight minutes through all those strength movements. Then we're already pretty fatigued. We got a good bit of volume in. Then we're gonna do a second circuit that's gonna be 30 seconds of uh, work out of the minute, 30 seconds working um, out of the minute and uh, every minute. So now obviously our volume is up and my intensity has to come down to still be able to get quality work in, in that time. The reason why I say it's not going? purely linear, um, the reason why I say it's not purely linear is because I repeat my strength phase. So workout A was done on day one, day five, and then again, uh, yeah, sorry, day one, um, day, sorry, strength days were done on day one, day three, and day five. And that first day is repeated on the fifth day. So it's not purely linear, but overall I'm spreading stressors across the week. As the week progresses, intensity comes down and volume goes up. So here is taking a whole bunch of examples and I want this to be overwhelming. So if you're looking at this and you're like, what the hell are you doing, Chris? Like you're making my head want to explode. Here are nine ways that you could lay out the week with your clients. And I'm going to make this real simple for you. So, so bear with me here, but you can see the program that we just looked at. This is assuming this is week one for every single one of these programs, Monday, a strength, Tuesday, B conditioning, Wednesday, C strength, Thursday, D conditioning, Friday, we repeated a strength. Remember that's the program we just looked at. And then Saturday we did E conditioning. So there's a solid six days a week. Sure, I could switch this up and put the rest day, which is on Sunday, somewhere else. And I could make this real overwhelming and do that for every day of the week, right? Then we've got three options here for five days a week, right? So I'm not going to read every single one just for time's sake. And I want to have plenty of time to answer your questions. But if you look A, B, C, D, A, just like straight across the week, two days off, uh, A, B, C, off, A, E, off. A off, C, D, A, E off. I guess I did read them all. <laughs> um, so there's a bunch of ways that you could lay out five days a week. Four days a week, we've got three options. And three days a week, I put down two options on here. Um, but with what we actually put together, we made templates for five different three-day-a-week options. Okay? So again, I want that to be overwhelming, but this next slide, here's all it is. That is all that I needed to write to lay these out. So. I could write a general template of what it is that I want to put together, like to spread out the week for my clients and say, all right, we're going to do strength on Monday, conditioning Tuesday, strength Wednesday, conditioning Thursday, strength Friday, conditioning Saturday off, right? If someone's going to train six days a week, the template I just showed you, perfect. If you look every single option that I just read off, look at Monday and look down that column. It's always a strength. Look at Tuesday, B conditioning, and look down that column. It's either off or it's B conditioning. Wednesday, it's always C strength. Thursday, it's always D conditioning or it's off. Friday, it's always A strength or it's off. Saturday, it's always E conditioning or off. And Sunday, in the examples I laid out, is always off. So 
again, even though that might sound really overwhelming, if you're following along, I can now write a template and we're going to talk about how to make this template even easier for every single one of my clients, regardless of how many days a week they train. If they train two days a week, cool. I could just take like what, what makes sense, which I would make the argument that strength training is going to make sense if someone only has two days a week. So all I need is their Monday A strength and their Wednesday C strength. Sure. They don't want to work out on Monday and Wednesday. Cool. I don't care. But for example's sake, I would just pull those days from this program and I would modify it to make sense for that individual. All right. I'm going to pause right there. If, if someone has questions, jump in, interrupt me, give you a few seconds while I take a drink. We good. You guys all like took your video off. So oh, here we go. I'm back at the top. Some of you have your video. on. All right. Good so far. Head wants to explode. Maybe cool. All right. So just to recap, all of that can be done by writing one program. And then obviously the main thing that would change is the key at the top of that example program that I just showed you. I wouldn't have six days and like A, B, C, D, A, E, if I was only doing four days a week, I obviously need to adjust the key to how it's laid out in that example. All right. So as we zoom in now, that's how we lay out the week. Let's zoom in and look at laying out the day. So really there were strength days and there were conditioning days and we could go nuts and get carried away with examples here. But the main thing is that people need tactics. And by people I'm saying like as trainers, this is a time where we really just need the tactics. We could get, hung up in arguments of like, well, I think that density training is best. Hey, I'm a big fan of like timed work, timed rest. Um, I like continuous training. I like uh, five, three, one. I like whatever. Cool. Like, so you could take this and you could say, well, I'm going to drop in like this. As long as you understand like the overarching principle of how to lay out the week so far, we're good. And now I'm going to talk about how we lay out the day, keeping in mind that most of our clients are going to be general population. Although, we do work with a tier one law enforcement group, we'll say, and um, we lay out their, their training very, very similar to this for a number of different reasons. So um, as we zoom in and look at the two main strength days, that was workout A and workout C, each day had four circuits in it. If you remember, I had A1, A2, A3. I had a power exercise um, that was paired with core and it was paired with mobility. That was the power section of that. Then we had a strength. Uh, circuit. Then we had a little assistance superset, and then we had conditioning to finish off. And here's what that looked like. So my power looking at workout a double skater, jump and stick paired with kettlebell dead bugs paired with this mobility unassisted single leg lowering. We did that three rounds. Then we went to strength RDL with dumbbells, half kneeling, single arm press with dumbbell standing hip cars. Then we went to our assistance 1.5 rep goblet squat, bent over seesaw row with dumbbells, and then conditioning. And if we look at the second day, I'm not going to go through and read each line item like I just did, but let's just compare a few things. B1 on both days, for instance. B1 on workout A was RDL with dumbbells, which is a lower body pull, right? It's a hinge. B1 on workout C is a reverse goblet lunge. So it's a lower body push, right? So you can see that we're starting to round out full body. B2 on workout A, half kneeling single arm press with a dumbbell. So we paired a press, an upper body press with a lower body pull. So you can see we're doing non-competing upper body, lower body push pull, right? The other day was reverse goblet lunge, which is a lower body push. So we're going to pair that with an upper body pull, bent over row with dumbbells. We're just rounding out, going full body. We drop in the whole Dan John line of if it's important, do it every day. So we just have the same motor control in there, standing hip cars, right? And then if you were to look and compare assistance, same thing, 1.5 rep goblet squat, right? Remember our main strength that day was RDL with dumbbells. And you could argue with me and say, no one's getting that strong doing RDL with dumbbells. And I would just remind you, this program's written for someone training at home with limited equipment. <laughs> and we'll talk about how you could still get strong, relatively speaking, even with uh, an, an inopportune situation like that. So um, that was a lower body pull for B1. C1 for assistance was a lower body push, 1.5 rep goblet squat. So you can see in the day we rounded out full body. Um, and then because we did a, a half knee leg single arm press for our strength on that day, we went to a bent over seesaw row with dumbbells in their assistance. And then we looked down at workout C and you can see that even those then are complementary to round out 
full body across the glute. 1.5 rep goblet squat compared with contralateral single leg RDL with dumbbell, bent over seesaw row with dumbbells, standing overhead press with dumbbells. It's just a full body routine, right? So pretty simple. Power, strength, assistance, conditioning. And I even just sort of gave you a little preview of how we dropped in exercises, but we will get more specific and, and more tactical of selecting those exercises. And then I'm going to show you the easiest way in the world that we were able to take, I think 118 people and in less than 48 hours, send every single one of them uh, completely customized programs to do at home without losing our minds. So um, that's coming. And then uh, conditioning, pretty like that I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, that's totally rounded out. You can see there's, there's some commonalities there, but um, the only other thing I'll point out is like the core, like was uh, supine dead bugs and workout a was prone planks and workout C. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's a very common way that we will pair things. Right. And then looking at the conditioning days, I already kind of previewed this. Um, there's a million ways that you could have gone about dropping in exercises but the main thing that I was previewing as we were looking at this was 20, 40, day one of, well, day one of conditioning, 25, 35, the next day of conditioning, and then a continuous circuit and 30, 30s with higher volume too. If you look four exercises for four rounds, that's a 16 minute circuit. So as we said, intensity is coming down across the week and volume is going up. And that's all that we did here. We could, again, we could talk about a million and a half ways to get that done. And if you're starting to think, well, you could have done this, you could have done that. Awesome. Then I think your head's in the right place. And there are a million ways we could have done this. Um, in terms of exercise selection, it doesn't mean that we only do like, you know, jumps and like kettlebell ballistics and things like which are more neurological early in the week. It just means like weight selection um, and the intensity at which we will do that work uh, would be a little bit higher at the beginning of the week. And if we were still going to do like looking at, I mean, this example here, there really isn't anything ballistic, uh, in the very last day, but you, you can see lateral lunge hops in the middle day. So this is still a pretty good representation of the more, um, like speed, like skater jumps and things like that early in the week, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can still have skater jumps later in the week. Someone just probably wouldn't be jumping as far and covering as much ground. Right. Pause right there. Questions? Makes sense so far. Hey, Chris. So the, yep. Um, so just quickly, um, each of those exercises, they're underlined there. Are they just linking to videos that you guys have shot or just videos you found on the internet that you're like, these are a strong example, no point in us reshooting them. Here's somebody doing these well. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like you're baiting me with my uh, Bill Hartman <laughs> yeah. thing at the beginning there. We already have our entire exercise library filmed. I'm trying to find who I'm talking to because I like to, who was it? I don't know where you are. There's too many people in here, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we already have our film. So all of those do happen to be linked to videos that we filmed, but this is, this is one of those instances like the situation that we're all in where we're good enough is good enough. If you want to go out and, and do this style, like, yeah, I mean, for the first, I don't know, year that I did training where we were sending, like did training online and we were sending people programs. I just went on the internet and pulled stuff. So I was using, I mean, going way back, like old Mike Robertson videos. Like, I feel like Ben Bruno had every exercise filmed and out there, but like Eric Cressy, whoever just grabbed their, their, their uh, videos and sent them off. So was that cool. you, Justin? Yeah. Cool. I was like scrolling through trying to find out who that was. No, that's perfect. Um, cool. Um, all right. Any other questions on this? So don't be overwhelmed. The main premise so far is regardless of the number of days of the, of the week, relatively uh, volume is going to go up across the week and intensity is going to come down. In terms of the day for our, our strength days, we have power, strength, assistance, conditioning. Um, the two main strength days are complementary in that they round out full body and our conditioning it's like a perfect representation of pretty linear um, of the volume going up across the week and intensity coming down because of that rise in volume. A lot of ways we could get it done, but that's the main thing I want you to understand so far. Now we'll zoom in and look at selecting exercises. And there's really two different tactics that we find really, really helpful. The top one 
um, I made up, I was, I was presenting to a group called SLED. It's South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. I didn't even know they existed before I presented to them. But basically, I guess, like a little backstory, like state police in South Carolina, like, like well, actually a, a, an easier one for me where I grew up, Pennsylvania, state police, like they do everything. Like a state trooper might be on the side of the road checking speeds. If there's a homicide, like a state trooper goes. Um, in South Carolina, I guess like everyone gets a title. So this group I presented to, SLED, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, is like you're, you're sort of a state trooper, but you're assigned to like a specific type of law enforcement. Like, oh, I work in, you know, auto theft. I work in homicide. Like, so not that you need to know that, but just fun little backstory. So I'm, I, I'm presenting to these guys. Um, they came out to a group that we work with and I got to spend a few hours with them. And I was never really probably ever going to see them again. And I was teaching them some of our approach to training. And one of the things was like, knowing from whenever I first came in with the guys that we work with is helping them to both see and call each other out when they're making exercise choices that are not going to be the best choice for them long term. Um, like for instance, whenever I first started with the group that we work with, I went in just observed and I saw guys doing relatively heavily loaded overhead squats, but like they're just like rolling in on the arches of their feet. Their knees are caving in. It looks painful. And some of them I think probably were in pain. It's like, why are you doing this? And I didn't have the rapport yet. So like if they asked me things like, but this is literally like day one, I'm observing. And I was like, all right, these are things that we need to address. And whenever sled came through, I wasn't going to have the opportunity to like slowly build a relationship and then step in and, and create some interventions. So I was like, all right, I want you guys, as you watch each other train to think, well, what is the goal? All right. Of like, and you could do this in, in, in like a bigger, like overarching, what's your long-term goal, but let's go like specific. So we said power, strength, assistance, conditioning. Let's say that it was strength. Okay. And we showed how our programs are laid out. Like if it's going to be lower body push on this day, the other day is going to be lower body pull. Okay. So my goal is to pick, let's say a lower body push strength movement. I know what equipment I have access to and everything. So Based on that goal, what are a bunch of exercises that I could do? Well, if I know the equipment and I know the goal, I could list off some exercises. And so far, all of them are appropriate for that goal. Well, what is my intent? Well, my intent, if it's to get someone stronger, is to either incrementally add load or manipulate some type of loading variable, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which does not have to be weight. To give like a little preview, it could be tempo. It could be the angle. It could be the amount of tension that, that they're using. It could be um, a whole bunch of things, right? So what is my intent of how I'm actually going to progress this exercise? All right, does it still make sense for the goal and what this person's choosing? And then the biggest one is how is my skill, okay? And we call this, I left this out, we call this the goal intent skill down up assessment. So that was down, what's my goal? Okay, so then what's my intent? All right, how's my skill? Or if you're watching someone else, what's their goal? All right, so then what's the intent here? How's the person's skill? And then the up part of the assessment is really just, it's like circular, filling it back in. Okay, does their skill allow them to express their intent so they can meet their goal? So let's go back to the overhead squat example. Well, what's the goal? Well, when I talk to them, and this is like a made up scenario, but when I talk to them and said, oh, I'm trying to get stronger, you know, like, oh, okay, you're doing Olympic lifting, like you're doing snatching, like, no, I just, just chose this, okay. Well, then what's your intent? Well, I guess if you're trying to get stronger, it would be to incrementally add more load or um, could say like build volume depending on how you're approaching it. But the intent would be to, let's just say, add more load to this exercise. Okay, how's their skill? Well, like I said, they're like rolling in on the arches of their feet. Um, their knees are caving in. It looks really painful. Their skill's not that good. So does their skill allow them to, important, safely... <laughs> express their intent of incrementally adding more load to this exercise. I'm going to say no on this one. And so therefore it's not really of all the exercises that we picked under the goal question, that's not going to be the appropriate exercise for someone else that may have been a perfectly appropriate exercise. And this is really how individualized training works. If we don't know much about the person, almost anything that answers the, what's the goal? Okay. What's your intent? All right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. This works for this person. Once we know the person, how's their skill we can, we can get specific. Okay. So number one, we follow that. And this is just like a quick, this is an internal dialogue. I don't want you to spend a ton of time on this. And, uh, as you, as you start using this, you'll find that you can do it real quick. Even watching people on, on the floor, maybe you manage a facility 
and your coaches are writing programs for people. And sometimes you walk in, you're like, what in the hell is that person doing? We'll change the, what in the hell is that person doing to the question of like, Hey, what's the goal here? All right. So like, how are we progressing this exercise? What's our intent? Hey, I'm a little concerned about their skill of safely expressing their intent so they can accomplish that end goal. Like let's, let's talk about this. And I'm not saying call your coaches out on the floor, but um, it's, it's a way that you could use that. All right. So that's goal, intent, skill, down up assessment. And then the second tactic that is really, really helpful, which is what I'm going to show you. We're going to revisit our program here is what we call one down, one up approach. Okay. So we have an exercise in mind. All right. But if that is going to be too hard for someone, what, what could we do that would be one down one easier from that? All right. That one isn't really challenging for this person, whatever that may mean. All right. What's one up. What's one step we could take upward to make this exercise more challenging. Okay. So we have goal intent, skill, down up assessment for selecting exercises and our one down one up approach for selecting exercises. Here's what that looks like. This is the exact excuse me, this is the exact template that the fake program that I wrote for myself was written off of this. So you can see that I already have the one down, one up approach built in. So if you remember on my program, it was double skater jump and stick, you know, because I'm so advanced, it's got to be the most advanced thing. <laughs> um, but that would be the one up approach. The middle choice would have been skater jump. I know technically, as I wrote this, I'm like, man, that could be confusing because technically the easier choice is up and the harder choice is down. But I'm really just thinking like going down in skill level or readiness or going up in skill level or readiness, right? So skater jump, one down, skater jump and stick. One up, double skater jump and stick. Now, if I would have picked double skater jump and stick, to be honest with you, that's a horrible example because I don't know what I would do for, for one up from that. But you could probably come up with something like, all right, now we're going to do whatever crazy exercise that would be one up from that. One down from that would become skater jump. So regardless of what exercise you're picking, when you're thinking about applying a, a template or like a general program like so to a whole bunch of people that you could make it more individualized, you always want to be able to think, you always want to be thinking, all right, what would be one up? What would be one down? Instead of just thinking, all right, here's my one exercise that we're going to apply to everybody. And this is the format that we use for our metabolic conditioning class um, that we do in our gym. And right now we're streaming online and as well as these, these templates that we've written out, right? So you look through every single thing has it. The only thing that doesn't on this one would be our mobility a three. We just have a general shoulder mobility thing on there and we have a general um, hip mobility thing on there. And I know from our coaches doing these and sending them out to people, they did not just restrict themselves to those two. Those were just dropped in for example's sake. Cool. Questions. So you could use the goal intent skill to maybe say, Hey, like, I don't like these three. We're not going to go with those. We're going to, we're going to pick another exercise, another, for instance, lower body pool B1. Um, and then still have a one down, one up from that. That would be your goal intent skill. Potentially, you're just like, hey, we're not, none of these are appropriate. And then how you could progress it, of course, we've got uh, reps, we've got sets. We're going to talk about that here coming up. But you could also look at progressing it with, if you started with the one down, all right, one up would be the middle one, one up from that would be the next one. Cool? Take a sip. Interrupt me if there's questions. What's a Brazilian get up, Chris? I was going to go back and click on it, but I, then I remember this is a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, stolen from Dan John when I saw him present years ago, but they're actually, they're a legit, it's, I, I forget how the actual test is done, but it's a mortality test. Um, and Dan, and Dan talked about doing it um, to one, it's, it's a really fun way to do conditioning. But it's also a, a good like risk assessment test for your clients. But we use it a lot for conditioning. And all that it is, is get down on the ground and get back up. Brazilian get up, right? Now, what? That, that could be like a whole bunch of things. You're right. So what it is, is like you give your clients a challenge. Okay, you, you can't use your arms. You can't use your right leg. You can't use your left arm or your right leg. You can't use your legs. I don't know if they're a gymnast, maybe. <laughs> But, um, but you just call out different things. So like, for instance, sometimes we'll write this into programs. If you notice, I think it was on that one, right? Where did you see it? Was it way earlier? Yeah, it was like okay. slide one. 
So yeah, it, it was on one of the conditioning days. And if you notice on that day, it said Brazilian get up. And then in parentheses, it said any way. So that one, if we're sending a, a, a program to someone at home, if they click the video, the video describes a whole bunch of ways that someone could do it. It's like, just pick some different ways. And then if you want to make it harder, it's not just get down on the ground and get back up. It would be get down on the ground and make contact with your back to the ground and your stomach to the ground. Yeah. Without whatever the limitations are, you know, and, and depending on, you have some people who like, that is the workout in itself. You don't have to give them any limitations. Get down on the ground, roll to your stomach, um, roll back to your back. Or if they went to their back, all right, roll to your stomach, you can get up from there. Um, that can be a workout for a lot of people. And then for others who are looking more of a challenge, sometimes when we're doing like say metabolic conditioning classes, we'll write up, all right, round one, um, no arms. Round two, uh, you know, can't use your right leg. Round three, can't use your right arm, left leg, you know, whatever. Just throw out different random stuff to keep them engaged, having fun and, and a little bit of a challenge. So other questions. Good. All right. So selecting sets and reps. So I just talked about intent whenever we talked about goal, intent, skill, down up assessment. And we talked about the different sections in the day of our main strength day. So we had power, we had strength, we had assistance and we had conditioning. And so once I know what section of the program this is going into, I have a better idea of what my intent is. For power, what's my intent? Well, there's probably a velocity um, component to that, right? Some, some type of a, oh, I just saw that people are typing in here. Um, oh, cool. Um, you know, but, but for power, it's going to be like velocity, it's going to be height, it's going to be distance, it's going to be something like with more of a speed component. It's also, as I talk about in some of the videos we filmed for this, it also is brakes. It's, it's your ability to stop on a dime. All of those are, are intents that we could have with power. With strength, the intent we talked about, I kept saying it over and over on that last example, was like the intent to incrementally add load. We could also say um, build volume with the same weights would also be another way to, to get stronger. But but we have an intent with um, assistance. Well, it depends. Assisting what? Like, what is the main goal this person has? Um, are we looking to stimulate more of like a hypertrophy response? Okay, my intent is to build a lot of volume at this time. Uh, maybe the assistance is that this person is just getting introduced into like some single arm, single leg type training. And so my intent here is just to do like a moderate volume that isn't going to, you know, completely overwhelm them mentally and, and get them some good practice reps in with learning these new things. But at the end of the day, we always want to be thinking, what is our intent? And then the next thing is that with our programs, we help our clients by, we give each week a goal. And a lot of people, and I think I even said something about CrossFit earlier. I love CrossFit. I've never done CrossFit. I don't have any problem with CrossFit. CrossFit has been amazing for our business. Um, especially years ago when it was real popular, we used to get members from CrossFit gyms all the time um, because it got them interested in strength training that they would have never been interested in prior is why. So um, one of the best things that CrossFit did for the entire fitness industry is it made the workout cool. It made the day cool. Like their whole thing is like you're competing to, you know, you're competing with yourself to get as much done on the day. You're competing with your friends that you're training with that day. Um, whatever it is. And obviously like I'm not setting the same goals for our people because we have a little bit different things that we're after, but that idea of giving people an aim for the day, because prior to that, most of our clients are like, Oh, I want to lose body fat. Well, you're not going to do that today. <laughs> like, so it's not that exciting. So there's not really something like in the here and now for you to get incredibly excited about. And we're all like, Oh, like you should be focused on some type of a performance thing and the rest of it will take care of itself easy for us to say that person is like, no, nah, I really just want to do this. So looking at what CrossFit did, and I'm not saying it was like totally linear, like, Oh, they did this. So we're going to do that. But, um, through a whole bunch of steps, we came to putting intentions on each of our weeks and sharing that with our clients. So when a client gets a new program, why isn't it advancing? There we go. I'm going to skip ahead here. When a client gets a new program, um, there are, well, when a client gets any program from us, there's four columns and I introduced the colors whenever I introduced the key earlier. So there's the blue, pink, green, purple, super uh, masculine colors is what we're going for. Um, 
no, our, like our uh, girl that helps out with our books was like, no, you need to do these colors to save ink. So there's the magic answer of why our colors are, our columns are colored this way. But each of those weeks, we give our clients a theme. So week one, we call base week because we're just, it's a new program. We're just setting a base of like, all right, I've got these new exercises, depending on how long they've been with us, they're probably not all new, but I've got these new exercises with these, you know, however many sets and however many reps, and I wanna go basically find this RPE. So the first day, you're just setting a baseline. You're getting used to this program the first week. In week two, you'll notice that this one has a whole bunch of ranges. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. You'll notice that um, it's three, let's look at B1, RDL with dumbbell three to four sets of eight to 12 reps. Week two is three to four sets of eight to 12 reps. It's exactly the same. If we look ahead to week three, two to three sets of eight to 12 reps. So the number of sets went down. Week one is base. Week two, um, we call train. I almost forgot. <laughs> we call train because we're just training off of the baseline that we set in week one. Same exact number of sets, same exact number of reps. Come in, look at the numbers you did before. Obviously, we're going to take readiness into account, how we're feeling today. But it's going to be easier because if, if your client did their job, they wrote down the weights they used before, and there's going to be less of a discovery process in this week. So we're going to come in. We're going to train off of our base from week one. Then in week three, we're going to drop the number of sets. But you can see that my RPE was seven in week one. It was seven in week two. And then it jumps up to seven to eight in week three. So the number of sets went down, right? volume, but the intensity, my RP intensity went up and we call this week PR and go home PR for personal record. Now it doesn't mean that they're going to set a lifetime PR. If they're new to training, they probably are. If they've been training for a long time, they're not, but their goal is to set a program personal record on this week, right? So it's less sets because they're still going to do some warm up sets, but then they're going to do less total working sets they're going to rest a little bit longer and they're still going to get in the gym and out or I guess in their living room, wherever they're doing this and out in about the same amount of time. Okay. That's week three. And then in week four, um, we call it reach week. So you can see that our volume jumps up. It was three to four sets, three to four sets, two to three sets. Now it's going to be four to five. Our reps are still stable, but our RPE came back down and there's a number of ways we could approach this week. If someone's newer to training, maybe they learned like, Holy cow, I didn't know I was like capable of, whatever, lifting, you know, that weight of dumbbells for RDLs. Um, and it wasn't so bad. Like, all right, my goal this week is to still get in and out of the gym or the living room in the same amount of time. Um, but actually get more sets in today. So that means they're, if this is what they chose, they're challenging themselves with the weights they hit in PR and go home using them for more sets in, uh, their reach week and getting done in the same amount of time. Yes, they could pyramid up and they could say, oh, my goal is to work up to and still hit like that top set. A lot of ways they could do it. But the big thing is that we give them the aim. Base week, train week, PR and go home, reach week. And then for us, like as they're talking to their coach, their coach will ask them without going into like a whole aside on that, the coach will ask them questions that helps to draw how they want to approach each of those weeks, right? But we make the week have a goal with those intentions. Make sense? questions. All right. So that's how we're adjusting the number of sets. Let's go back and talk about reps. One thing I want you to notice is highlighted at the top of this uh, template. It says P five to six S eight to 12 a six to eight. And again, I said, I was going to stick to tactics here. If, if anyone has questions about how we're really going through and doing everything, ask away at the end. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to answer for you, but just to move on with the tactics. The main thing is that I've got rep ranges highlighted. P stands for power. S stands for strength. A stands for assistance, right? Oh, that's right. If you remember on the day, the top, the A's, that's power. The B, that's strength. The B's, those are strength. The C, that's assistance. And if we were to scroll down, D's conditioning, and they're not really included because we don't always and don't often do, whoops, don't often do reps for conditioning. But the main thing I want you to notice is that on this template, there's a range, five to six, eight to 12, six to eight. And then the ones that aren't highlighted after that would be where I kind of pre-planned, okay. And then in the second phase, once someone finishes this program, sure, we can switch exercises. We'll talk about that. Um, but we also pre-map like, all right, where are we going in terms of a repetition standpoint? So you can see for the next round, P3 to four, S6 to 10, A10 to 12, once they finish that, 
whole entire month where I think we'll go in month three, once they finish that month, where I think we'll go in month four, okay? So there it is filled into the template. Now we're putting everything together, right? We've got our power, strength, assistance, conditioning. If we look at you know A1, we've got our one down, one up approach. And then we look over at our sets and reps. We actually have some ranges built in. It's not just straight up like two sets of five per side or you know, looking at our strength, it's three to four of eight to 12 or eight per side, depending on the exercise selection. There's all these ranges, okay? So what we do is let's go ahead and look at the example of the program that I wrote for myself. Now, instead of having ranges, let's go back. Two to three sets of five per side. I have three sets of five per side. Instead of kettlebell dead bugs, two to three sets of five to six per side. Got three sets, still left a range here. That's cool, five to six per side, right? And you can see that all of the areas where there's a range, not all of them, but most of the areas where there's a range, I cut out that range. If I didn't cut out that range, that means, even though allegedly this program is written for me, if I was coaching me <laughs> through this program, if there's a range, I'd probably be talking to me about how to know when enough is enough on that, right? And when we're gonna call that set. Make sense? So whenever we're writing out the templates, we could say, hey, based on training age, based on all these things, goal, intent, skill, down up assessment, I think if we have a range like this, that's going to cover most of our membership base. Make sense? Feel free to interrupt me. All right. So we've covered laying out the week. We've, well, we've covered what a program looks like. We've covered how the week is covered with that program, what the individual days are made up of. We've talked about reps. We've talked about sets. I know we're moving pretty quick, but we're starting to cover the whole thing. Now we're looking at, okay, we get someone a program and this person's goal is to get stronger. Crap, we have limited equipment. What are we going to do? Well, we have a whole ebook for this called You Can't Get Bored. You can get it for free from Strength Action. Go on Instagram, click on the link tree, get that if you haven't. Um, but just to introduce a few things, and some of them aren't in that ebook. One, I like this picture. Uh, we have a guy at the top doing a body weight squat, like reaching his arms out for like counterbalance. Let's just pretend that that's like the level of squatting that he's at. All right. He's been training for a while. He's ready to progress. Clearly that's not him unless he somehow got younger. <laughs> um, but now we have him doing a goblet squat. That's a progression, right? Maybe he had a kettlebell. He wasn't ready for it in that top picture. So we started body weight. He progressed. He has one kettlebell in his house. So we started doing goblet squats crap with the weight of that kettlebell he's kind of ridden it out and i will introduce how that would be pretty hard to do with all the different things that we could do but we want to make just the exercise itself a little bit harder oh that's right we could do an offset rack squat so you could start to do like with limited you know from body weight to like very restricted equipment how could we start to do one down one up this is just another representation of one down one up with literally load so goblet squat in the middle, one up from that, offset rack squat, one down from that, could be a bodyweight squat. Or if you had light enough kettlebell, it could have been like a reaching counterbalance squat, okay? But that's not the only way that we can progress and regress weight and, and exercises. Obviously reps, and I showed you in the previous slides, the plan that we have in terms of month to month, how we're gonna progress the reps. Weight, if they've got it, easiest way to progress people, right, is with weight. But people are at home, maybe they don't have access to all these different weights, okay? Tempo. Tempo is a really good way. We could start to say, hey, I want you to take X number of seconds, you know, on the way down. I want you to pause for X number of seconds. I want you to take X number of seconds on the way back up and pause for X number of seconds. I, I actually really, if I'm being honest, even when we write seconds in, I will tell our people don't get too hung up on counting the exact seconds. Just start to look, oh, that means take a long time to go down. <laughs> pause for, you know, a, a short break take a long time to come up, you know, whatever it is, like just start telling people, don't get hung up too much on counting because probably gonna get internal too much and training quality will get out. But tempo, tension could just be like, go ahead and mess around with tempo and tension. So now it just goes from like press a kettlebell, for example, slowly to like crush the kettlebell as hard as you can, crush your opposite hand, lock your legs out as hard as you can, bring your belt buckle towards your sternum and move slowly. Haven't changed the weight, but now we're starting to, to recruit more and we can make ourselves get fatigued that much quicker even with that and progress it that way. Um, time could be uh, a lot like tempo, but it could also be that like maybe we're not giving people reps, we're giving them the amount of time that they're working. So we had 20, 40, right? And then this, the second day was 25, 35 and the third day was 30, 30. 
but maybe week to week, we actually start to make some incremental increases in the amount of time working and bring down the amount of time resting. The angle, right? So one, it doesn't even necessarily need to be a progression. It could be a regression. It could be that someone's not ready to squat with their feet flat on the floor. So we could elevate their heels. All right, there's a regression. Could also be that we wanted to overload someone's quads more for some reason, give them a more knee dominant squat because of something that made sense for their goal. All right, angle again, heels elevated, could mean an entirely different thing. But you could mess around with the angles on someone's push-up. The higher of an incline they're on, the easier the push-up's gonna be. Progressing them could be boom, 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 boom. Incrementally lowering that push-up towards the floor. Wanna make it even harder? Oh, we start to elevate their feet and we start to bring um, their feet above their head, right? So I'm not saying this like, this is some magic stuff that I've made up and you guys have never heard this before. I just want you to be sitting there hopefully going, oh yeah, you could do this, you could do that. Um, and then loading types. There's a whole bunch of examples in the ebook that I wrote, um, but that would be where we get into things like 1.5 reps, say a goblet squat, all the way down, come up halfway, down again, all the way up, that's one rep. Um, ratchet in quarters would be, let's use goblet squat again, the whole way down, up a quarter of the way, all the way down, up halfway, all the way down, up three quarters of the way, all the way down, up the whole way. That was quarters, that's one rep, we're gonna do 20. No, I don't know, unless you hate someone. But um, there's there's tons, that's just using ones with like, um, messing around with the, the distance that they're covering. But there are tons and tons and tons of options in that book. With me so far? Questions, comments, concerns? So there's ways that we can progress even body weight movements. So we go back and we look at this program and you can see we've got the, I said about reps. So we've got reps. We could progress reps month to month. We've got exercises. We could just progress them. Someone doesn't have to necessarily stick with that one exercise for the month. If they're ready, they could go one up, right? We've got rep ranges. And at the very top of the program, workout A, it says loading types. We could even have a plan that in week three, you're going to progress and you're going to go to a different loading type. Like they're going to go from straight sets of eight to 12 reps or eight reps to 1.5 reps in week three, whatever. Um, you can get creative in terms of applying this stuff. Okay. And there's how it looked in the example program done. That was again, allegedly <laughs> written for me. So you can see different loading types that were actually applied here, a 1.5 rep goblet squat, trying to build a little bit more volume and my assistance. Um, Everything else is going to be pretty much straight sets, I think. But um, 2040s would be a loading type. That's just fixed, fixed, fixed time work, fixed time rest. Um, but if you look at this, let's do a quick, all right, RDL with dumbbells. How could we make an RDL with dumbbells harder? They don't have a heavier weight. Well, let's use one of the examples we already did. We could do 1.5 rep. We could go all the way down in that RDL, come up a little bit, back down, all the way up, right? We could turn it into like a hybrid exercise of RDL down. Once they're in like a good solid um, RDL position, do a bent over row with those dumbbells, come back down, stand back up. That's one rep, right? We could just go a real simple one and go, um, uh, uh, why in the world did I just blank out on the word I wanted to use, but, but um, tempo. We could say, hey, take three seconds on the way down, pause. Uh, or say no pause, three seconds on the way down, no pause, three seconds on the way up, don't lock out, just keep going. So they're just continuously staying under tension. Um, lots and lots of ways that we can progress these things, right? So hopefully you're starting to go like, oh, you could do this, you could do that. Perfect, think of the right way. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna pause and I wanna take some questions and then we're gonna do some case studies and I'm gonna pull up, actually before I do this, I wanna pull up something else. So I'm gonna stop my share. I can see more of you now. What questions do we have? Start typing or calling stuff out. And I'm pulling something else up. Don't be shy. All right, I got one, Chris, but this is more of like a, I guess, businessy type one. If you were gonna streamline programming, right? Which we do for faction but it was for general population and you were going to sell it as a product, which um, like, right? Like, Hey, this is a complete body weight, five day split, whatever. Would you still have the one up one down or would you just put one thing? And this is like no assessment, low price point. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like just a, here's a program with videos. Yeah. 
not like, yeah. Yeah. The difference is, I mean, you could just have it the way that, that I do there, but for anyone who's not familiar with the strength action programs, that's literally what we do. And we would write like, say the RDL, it was like RDL with dumbbell, RDL with dumbbells, single leg RDL with dumbbells, I think, or maybe it was contralateral single leg RDL, but that was like the one down one up on the RDLs in that example. If I was going to send it to a client like that, it would have said a one, um, lower body pull and then parentheses it would say pick one for the month or pick one but progress when ready um instead of just having the three on there because where people would start to get confused is they're like wait like how do i know this isn't a circuit versus you know so we would just make that note like this is the movement pick one progress when ready or pick one for the month and yeah we do that all the time all right cool thanks man. yeah all right so other questions Good. All right. So we talked a little bit about the one down, one up. I showed you some there. We put this together as a product and there will be for the next week, it's going to be on sale for really, really cheap, but it comes with some different one pagers like this. I just pulled up this one as an example. So say someone only had a dumbbell or a kettlebell. What are some power exercises we can do? So you'll see like I have some things listed as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There's three different options for one down, one up. So say a kettlebell. Well, we're going to go with the swing. All right. Middle would be dead stop kettlebell swing. One down could be just practicing the hike. One up could be a full on kettlebell swing. Um, something with a, a dumbbell, a goblet counter. Or I guess this one could be dumbbell or kettlebell. Um, no, it's dumbbells. Goblet counter movement jump. One down could be a potato sack squat jump. One up could be a vertical jump with dumbbells. Then we've got uh, another dumbbell one. Push press with dumbbells in the middle. One down would be single arm push press with dumbbell. Uh, one up would be a dumbbell snatch. Okay. And these are really like, this is not an end all, you know, list. Like, oh, really? You can look them up with nine exercises? No. These are intended to be like a good starter. And then for you to be like, oh, you could also do this. But the cool thing is, um, Wes was asking about Brazilian get ups. They're not on this one, but say you weren't sure what a potato sack squat jump is, you would click it and it would pull up the corresponding video if it ever loads. <laughs> wow, that's slow. I'll give it one more second. I think it's going to go here. Right? So just real simple, just shows the exercise. All right, that's what I'm doing. Every single thing is video linked, just like in the program. Like whenever we send those out, we delete away. So say you wrote your templates and you have your one down one ups that you wrote in with your videos linked, like do yourself the favor and one, like create some one page sheets like this or pick up what we have and you can just have all of our stuff. It's all unlocked. Um, you can, you can use it. Um, the actual like, uh, programs, they're not PDFs that you can't click on. This is a PDF, but you can copy things straight off of it and you can plug and play. The big thing is like, if you're going to do this yourself, make sure that you just link, make your templates and link the programs in advance. Like don't every time you make a program for a client, be like, all right, like here's my one down one up. Sorry. Let me go find those videos. Just make like your progression list of like, all right, here's all of our different squat variations. Here's all of our different, you know, deadlift variations. Here's our lunges. Like here's blah, 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 whatever. And then just make a whole bunch of lists. Then whenever you go and have them all video linked, then whenever you go to send your clients a program, you have a template like what I showed you with like the one down, one up in, just delete away the two that you don't want. Done. Takes two seconds. So that's how we were able to send out those programs so quickly because the, the main work was writing the long template. Once that was done, it was all right, how many days a week is someone training? Okay, we're going to go to this template. And then once we get that template, it's looking at the one down, one up. All right, what exercises are appropriate from a goal intent skill assessment? Okay, then how many on that range of sets, on that range of reps, what makes sense for this person? Boom, done. Saves so much time, so much time. So definitely recommend doing that. Um, questions? Chris, I got a question. Yeah. So, well, this one kind of dates back to like a little slides ago, but what, I guess the question would be what, maybe templates do you like have in 
in store for like conditioning templates. Like I know I saw like the 20, 40, 25, 35, 30, 30. Uh, so like the ladder countdown, so you just kind of like keep a template of like just conditioning ideas that you use that you refer to uh, when you have to do conditioning. Like how, how do you plan that out? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing for strength action. We have a, a huge bank of them that, that it's been kind of a blessing in all of this is we have this huge bank of every single conditioning. Cause this is how we lay out. If anyone's not familiar, I, I know that you are, but yeah. if anyone's not familiar, strength faction is laid out depending on the semester as either a five day a week or a six day a week program. Um, and there's always like, it's, it's laid out like exactly what I just showed. There'll be like a strength day. So it varies sometimes or it might be like strength on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. If there's occasional times where we do like upper lower splits, but for the most part, it's strength training days on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then it's conditioning days on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, if it's going to be a six day a week program. So um, I have all of those that are already written out. But the other thing too, is that yes, we do have a huge bank of them already made because the conditioning days that I showed you in this example are literally uh, slightly modified versions of our metabolic conditioning classes that we're running this month at the gym online. Okay. So yeah. And like to give you an example, I mean, we've been doing this for years. So, um, Just trying to get this to share real quick. All right, here we go. So can you see this, like these files here? Okay. So that is 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Each of those is a year of one month work. Well, obviously 2020 is not a year yet, but it's, it's the year's metabolic conditioning workouts. Right. So like not necessarily something I was going to go into today, but there's definitely a lesson. If you guys are, are, writing things like maybe you have some type of a general like conditioning class for your jam one that's how we lay ours out we spread stressors across the week it's not always timed but we're thinking like like the general idea of okay we want the volume to go up as we progress across the week and we want the intensity to come down so many ways we can get that done so if i were to go in and click you can see that the different programs are in here apparently 11 months um, which is really just because different holidays and stuff we meet we take off two weeks around uh, christmas and um, New Year's and stuff. So yeah, there's 11 in each one, but say we click on March, 2019. Hopefully you guys will go to see this. Can you see the word document that is, can you see this word document? Um, no, I don't think you opened it yet. All right, hang on. I did. It's just that it's only sharing that. So I click, I'm just doing this for example's sake. I click on that. It's going to look a little different. These aren't going to be video linked because this is what our coaches write up on blackboards in the gym, but just to show you a different, Example here, and honestly, this is, I clicked on March for a reason because it's, it's a slight difference. You can see this is what we did in March of last year. And here's another time saver for you. Don't reinvent the wheel every year. Once you write a year of like general conditioning stuff, here's what I do every single time. I open the March program from the year prior and go, okay, one year later, what would Chris do different? Ah, I would change this. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So you're going to see some serious similarities in this program to what I had up. You're going to see some differences too, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of carryover. So, and obviously some of this, like we can't do blaze pods <laughs> online. I don't know how we would do that, but um, yeah, keep every single program that you write, keep a database. And then I never imagined we were going to have to have videos of all of our conditioning class stuff, but we do now. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? What's the old school folder? Oh man, that's going to go back. Uh, let me see what year it goes back to. Just anything prior to 2017. So that goes back to 2014. I don't know why we just didn't used to do a folder every year. And I think we eventually got to be like, where in the world is this program? It just becomes like a mess of programs. So we started organizing them by year. Makes it easier when you're like, all right, I'm going to open the March 2019 program and think, what would I do differently in 2020? As opposed to opening a folder of just a mess of programs. So every time you update, like, it's like that's all in Dropbox. So if I load Dropbox into a new computer, 
it's not even like they nicely have the year that they were written, like easy to find. It'll show the year that it was like transferred and you start to go like, ah. so just the way we do it. We good. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. All right. So here is, oh, and I'll say this. There's a lot of people on the call who are in strength faction because Wes, I'm going to yell at you. Where'd you go? I'm right there's, here. There he is. Wes said, send me this. If you're in strength faction, you have all of this. Like, I didn't so, check the dashboard yet. Okay. Yeah, so go to the dashboard. Click on the lessons for this week. The very top one says um, home fitness program design made easy. It's a recorded PowerPoint presentation of me going through that. Then it's, it's 12 done for you templates that are video linked that you can delete away the days that, um, that uh, or delete away the exercises. So like the one down one approach. All right, I'm just gonna send my clients this. Or if you want, like, like, uh, Gayla, like you said, like you could write in like, all right, lower body pool, pick one, like, or maybe it was, I don't even know. Wes, I think you said that. I don't know. Someone said that, but yes, if you are in strength faction, you have all of this. There's a, there's a zip file, click it. It'll download, you get the 12 templates, you have the PowerPoint slides, you have those one pagers of the one down, one ups for body weight, dumbbell, kettlebell. The you can't get bored ebook is lumped into there. Um, there's a video for how to edit the document, like everything. So yeah, you guys have that. So, and if you're not in strength faction and you want that, um, we're gonna be putting out a link that you guys can get it. All right, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna pull back up the PowerPoint presentation. And I want to do a little bit of kind of gaming through some of this. So we're not going to do like the full, like, all right, how many sets, how many reps, but let's pretend that you needed to write, let's just go power strength assistance conditioning. All this person has is one kettlebell. And for some crazy reason, you don't even get to use body weight. Could you write them a complete program? Let's assume that the kettlebell is, is like a good general weight. So let's say like it's a, it's an average weight. Like let's say it's like a five, 10, 170, five, nine, hundred, 165, about 10% body fat. Uh, no. um, it's, it's a, it's a general guy. Um, they have one kettlebell. So let's just assume like knowing their size, like a 24 kg is gonna be like pretty appropriate for them for a lot of stuff. 53 pounds. Um, power strength, assistance, conditioning, the whole nine. So if we go power, okay. If you remember our power block, the top of, of our strength day, was um, a power movement, core, and then mobility, okay? And you gotta use the kettlebell. So think through it in your head, right, along with me here. So we're gonna go power. One kettlebell, what could I do? Well, I could do a two-hand swing. I could do a one-hand swing. I could do a clean, I could do a high pull. I could do a snatch, I could do a push press. I could do a goblet, like a jump goblet squat. I could do that potato sack uh, squat jump. I could do some type of like a, the kettlebell is actually low. Like that dude is there in the picture, but like maybe I do like a lateral lunge, reach the kettlebell towards the foot that I'm lunging to and then drive back like to a clean at the top, all kinds of like different stuff. Right. But so we come up with a whole bunch. All right. Well now like you have a person in mind, all we need to do is say, Oh yeah, power. We could do all these things. Goal, intent, skill, down up assessment. All right. Well we kind of did goal because the goal was we're dropping in for power. Intent would be like, velocity, whatever. All right. Skill. Think of the individual you're training. How's their skill level? Oh man. They're like just learning kettlebells. They're not ready for swings or anything yet. Um, but let's pretend they're pretty good at squatting and you're like, Oh, they can do that jump goblet squat or that potato, uh, potato, potato sack <laughs> squat jumps. Right. So that'd be like a quick, I'm not going to go in as much detail for every single one, but then we go core. All right. We can come up with a huge list of what we could do for core. Maybe we're in like a push up position plank and we reach like underneath our hands and we drag the kettlebell the opposite side. Then we post on that hand, drag it back the other way. Maybe we are supine and we do kettlebell dead bugs, which is like the kettlebell is in our hands. And as one leg reaches out, we reach our arms straight back overhead and just alternating legs in each one, right? We could do get up variations, all kinds of stuff. Um, mobility. I don't know why we would use the kettlebell, but let's just pretend that we needed to, we could do arm bars. We could uh, hang on to the kettlebell like in suitcase position and do a shoulder car. Um, if it was hip mobility, I don't know, we could do cars for some reason holding the kettlebell like for your radiation, but tons of stuff you come up with, right? And it still is just gonna be that, like what makes sense for the individual. Goal up, or yeah, uh, goal intent, skill, down up assessment. You could do one down, one up for every single thing, not really for mobility, but 
And then strength, right? Hopefully you guys are like, oh, you could do this. You could do that. You could do the other thing. Like they have one kettlebell. So we kind of talked about, let's just go with squat. Like maybe they, uh, actually if, if we chose for them to do like a, a goblet squat jump, let's say, ah, oh, they already did like a squat thing. So let's do hinge. So, um, one kettlebell would be pretty hard to really overload them for a hinge, but let's say they're pretty good at their single leg RDL. So they're going to do like a hybrid, like single leg contralateral single leg RDL. And then once they're in that RDL position, let's do that hybrid. I talked about earlier, they're going to do a row. Then they're going to drive back to the top. That's one, you know, pick, pick an appropriate amount of reps, whatever. And then they're going to do like a half kneeling single arm kettlebell overhead press. They could do a Z press. They could do, you know, whatever, but some type of a push with that. Um, and then motor control, you know, some of the examples I gave above, but whatever, whatever you pick there. And then we get into assistance to round out full body, right? So we went a contralateral single leg RDL row. So that's a lower body pull primarily. So then my assistance on that day would be a lower body push. Could be a split squat, could be a rear foot elevated, you know, goblet, rear foot elevated goblet split squat. Um, contralateral, like rack could be like having the kettlebell low rear foot elevated or split squat. Um, could be like a lateral lunge, a lateral squat. Uh, could be a step up, could be all kinds of things, right? One kettlebell, goal intent skill, down up assessment, one down, one up. Um, we'll do one more to round out assistance. We don't, we'll do one real quick for conditioning, um, but that was lower body push. So we need an upper body pull. Could be a, a knee on bench, like regular single arm uh, kettlebell row. Could be a three point kettlebell row, just the hand on the bench and they're in a good like hinged position. Could be a bent over row, like not supported by anything, single arm kettlebell row. Um, could argue for cleans there. Right. Um, and then conditioning, I mean, we kind of go back to all of its kettlebells. So we kind of go back to, we said they weren't really ready for any of those ballistics. So I don't know, we'd, we'd get creative, but there's a lot of things I'm sure you come up with. So you can see one kettlebell and here's the great news. If your client has one kettlebell at home, they're not going to be restricted to just using one kettlebell. They're going to be restricted to that kettlebell plus their body weight. Plus you can get creative and say, Oh, what could we do with a bath towel? What could we do with a book bag and load that thing up? What could we do with insert all the random things they have? And you could write really, really good programs people to do at home. The big thing is keep in mind laying out the week and spreading stressors going into the day and making sure that the days are balanced out. Like I could get carried away and make a third strength day, but just start simple. You have that, that strength a you have strength C power, strength, assistance, conditioning, round them out, make them full body, make sure it's appropriate for the individual when you zoom in and select exercises, power, or, uh, goal intent, skill, down up assessment, one down, one up, save yourself time. Write the templates or snag ours and, uh, and be done with it. We could do the same thing. Why isn't this working? We could do the same thing with one dumbbell, right? I'm not going to sit here and, and make you listen to me drone on. You could all do it, right? So I would challenge you, like, just keep that in mind. and um, and do that today if you want. Just give yourself the challenge of writing an entire program with just one dumbbell. And we could have kept going. We could have done the conditioning days. We could have done workout C, all of that. And then body weight only. And honestly, like I filmed all of these. If you do decide to pick up the product we put together, I filmed all of these live. I had no plan going into it. I was like, all right, body weight only. I could do this. And by the time I got to this one, because I did them in this order, I said, genuinely, I think that it's easier to do body weight only than it was one dumbbell and one kettlebell. Because when it comes to like power, you know, you got um, snap downs, you've got vertical jumps, you've got skater jumps and all like the progressions and regressions from those. You've got like plyo push up progressions, all kinds of things. I, it's for me, I don't know. I was just like, oh, I could do this for core. Think about all the body weight core movements, almost every core movement. <laughs> um, for mobility, same thing. We get to strength. All right, well, I've got pretty much every variation ever. And the way that I'm going to progress it, it would be time under tension reps, um, you know, 1.5s angles. It's, I just feel like this one's so much easier. So, but same thing. If you run into that challenge, you're like, I can't do this. Like I only, this person only, they have no equipment at home. They, they don't have, well, they have a towel, they have a book bag, they have whatever, but let's pretend they only have body weight. It's easy. It's easy once you take away the idea of making workouts with just body weight, and you're like, wait a minute. All right, we're going to lay out the week. We've got the strength days. We've got the conditioning days. All right, for strength, I need my power. I need core. I need mobility. All right, now I need my main strength movements. All right, we need assistance to round out full body for the day. And we need conditioning finishers.
if you, if you approach it with, with that lens, it's so easy to write these things. So hope that helps. It's your turn now. Put this stuff to use. If you do want to get it, I honestly, Todd, are you there? I don't know if he's, he's there. He's working. Um, I don't know if you, if we were like putting the link in here or if you were like emailing people or what, but yeah, I can put it, I can add it. So, um, it's another one. Like we, we put our, our program design product, like super cheap, uh, last two weeks or whatever. And this, like, we were like, Oh, I don't know. Like what? So eventually like this thing will go to one ninety nine, but we just launched it at 79 bucks for the next week. Again, if you're in string faction, don't do that. You have it. It's in the dashboard for you. Um, but if you're interested in getting all this, it's 12, it's those 12 templates completely done. It's the PDF one pages with the one down one up like starters. It's not all of them, but it's the starters are in there. Um, all kinds of stuff. It'll save you a ton of time and, and, uh, hope it helps. And if you hate it, get your money back and we really can't come take it back from you only because of social distancing. Otherwise we totally would, but no. So <laughs> There's a link, Todd just posted it. Strengthaction.com slash home dash fitness dash program dash design dash made dash easy. We still probably could have made the link easier, but <laughs> that's what it is. What questions do we got? Hey, Chris, can uh, you hear me? Uh-huh. All right, um, so I have to say the the biggest real question that I like have here is um is uh um I just want to make like sure that I am giving them a really good program and I tend to get a little bit too caught up um into making this beautiful lovely program that kind of um uh I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking at so basically right now I am just worried because there's so much other stuff out there people are like offering right now and trying to compete with that as well because uh I used to work at a gym a box one and as we all know the gyms are all now closed so I've been trying to get one-on-one -on -one clients but um I don't know I feel like I am just so focused on the whole on the on the whole program or should I just stick to just or should I just stick to the like to the like you know basics uh what what do you mean like a program and the basics like what's the difference so um so like uh so for instance I am almost finished taking the course um with uh you guys I have a video left I got one more um, but like for instance, basics like um, pushing, pulling, hinging, squatting. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, should I try and focus more on that there? Because a lot of them do not actually have weight, so it's going to be all like it's going to be all like you know body weight. I don't know. Yeah. I think maybe I'm just stressing out my yep. like own self on trying to create totally a nice program. You know. Yeah. So think, think back to what I was just saying with like the slide right before the very last one where it was like body weight only, like I'm going to say yes to everything you said, you should give them a program and you should keep it basic because here's, here's a couple things. Like there's a lot to unpack with what you just said. Everyone around you is doing training online. Well, everyone around you that's doing training online doesn't have a relationship with your clients. Um, so first and foremost, like that's the biggest thing. We're not, no one is stealing clients from each other right now. And, and if they are like, you know, whatever. Like I, I wouldn't get hung up on those maybe one to three clients that might do that. And I don't even want to put a number in your head, but it's like, whatever, like definitely don't focus on that. Um, I just, I don't really see that being an issue. So with that out of the way, like, should I focus on like fancy programs or the basics? I would say focus on programs and the basics. So if we go back to like, they just had body weight, which they're not, they're going to have other things they could do it still would be power, strength, assistance, conditioning within power. All right. They only have body weight. What could they do? And it's just, you knowing that individual, like, is this person okay to jump? Okay. They could do a vertical jump. They're not ready to jump, but they, they need to work on like the mechanics. Okay. They could do like a snap down and hold like that bottom position. Um, 
they're, they're ready to jump and you want to get like, you know, maybe it was vertical jumps on one day and I don't want to give them the same thing the other day. What am I going to do? Ah, like, are they ready to um, control like a lot more lateral movement? Like, ah, oh, we could do a skater jump, but it's pretty new to them. So I just want them to do like a light jump and stick that landing on one foot. All right, reset, light jump the other way, stick the landing on one foot and just think, but it's, it's the same exact thing. That's just me giving you examples of power and then core, right? And then mobility, everything that you're learning in the four week course with us right now, Stance. We get to strength. All right. We've got a lower body push paired with an upper body pull, just body weight. You know, you've got squat variations, you've got lunge variations, you've got all kinds of, you know, ways to progress those um, angles that you would, you know, lunging back, you know, a reverse lunge, you've got forward lunges, you've got lateral lunges, you've got crossover lunges, you've got all different things, right? So just don't let that overwhelm you. Just think that is, is the liberating truth of it is that, Oh wait, I can still check the box on every single thing. And then if someone, uh, just isn't ready for like the craziness of, of different loading types, this is not a time where what I teach you in that, in that program is very much written for people working with weights in terms of, uh, rep selection. There is zero issue with you incrementally increasing the reps workout to workout right now, week to week right now. So don't be afraid to think outside the box, but all those basics still apply. All right, cool. Sweet. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. This is maybe outside the scope of this call. Oh, wait, this is private. I'm not going to be that loud. <laughs> Okay. So it's not, I don't know if, if, uh, if this person really meant to send us as a private question, cause there's nothing like private in here, but basically the question is, um, uh, this is maybe outside the scope of the call, keeping it safe for clients, making sure they know they're moving well and are aware of it when they're not. Do you ask them to video themselves and send you the videos or maybe have some online sessions over zoom speaking for us in that we're taking, Taking our existing clients. We know most of them pretty well. We do have some people who are on trials and are like brand new and have since converted and are in this, but our clients can do what they want. They still have access to small group personal training with the shutdown. We just do them over zoom. So we just say, Hey, like, you know, sign up. We have, we just changed our schedule to instead of it, like you're coming into the gym, we put all of our hours except for 5am. Cause that's very much a commuter time and no one's commuting right now. And 7 p.m. Uh, some days we took down because same thing. It's a commuter time. Um, it's still there some nights, but no one signed up for it. We put all of our hours and people can still sign up for small group sessions. But then the coaches are also, they ask the clients how often they want, but they're checking with clients individually. And the clients have options to, hey, they got a new program. They can do a walkthrough of that program over Zoom. They can jump into those small group sessions. So, um, but some people are not comfortable being on video, which like, I don't understand because we watch you work out when you're in the gym. I don't know why you think it's gonna be different now, but whatever. And that's okay. It's just, I think you need to take into account how you're going to progress them and, and like how well you know them. If, if that's the issue. Thank you. That was me. Thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And Marsha said, thanks for the link. I don't see where to actually click to purchase. There should be a big button that says it's like a maroon button. Um, But um, I'll check again. I just wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Let me just double check that we sent you the right, um, home fitness program design made easy. If you scroll, whoa, I'll come out, come here. what in the world? I'll tell you what's super weird is our website. Like, did not look like this. Something happened to our website, Todd. <laughs> um, but it's okay. I know where it is. At the very bottom, you're right. The buttons disappeared. We are having our website redone, and I think that they're in there working on it right now. So, um, but at the very bottom, it says home fitness program design made easy, and it says 199, and it's crossed out, and then it says uh, $79. Just click that. There should be buttons. I'll find out what's going on. Hey, Chris. Yeah. If you hover under where that slide is, the home fitness program design made easy. If you just hover under it, it should light up. Click here to get access for crossed off just $79. And I, I clicked. It just didn't look like it was clickable to me. So it did work. Thank you. So weird. Yeah. yeah. I spent all this time making this. I have no idea. 
So we're having our website redone right now. <laughs> and this is, uh, I guess, one of the challenges of doing that while this is going on. So sorry about that, but it's there. We'll look into that since we hang up and making sure it's a little clear because that looks different than when I made it earlier. Chris, I got one for you. Yeah. What's up, Nikki? Hi, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, my dog's making a debut today. Um, so when you talk about programming and, you know, working with your, with your clients, would you approach your programming or your consultation process differently if they're actually not a client of yours? So I've had a few people, you know, reach out from the gym who are not my clients that are asking for help. Yeah. And I guess my question to you is, um, would you approach that the same way you would otherwise? Or I feel like, of course, lately it's a little bit harder for me just because I've never seen this person move before. Yep. I'm not there in the flesh. Um, so I, I guess my question to you is how, how would you approach that? Yep. Great question. So we are just getting going with this. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you like that we have done this, but it, it doesn't freak me out. Like I know exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to start with basically like when people come into our gym, we start with a one-on-one -on -one assessment and goal setting session. The main thing that we do in that is we sit down, like they fill out a questionnaire beforehand. We're still going to have them fill out that questionnaire. We're going to tweak the questions a little bit to more like struggles that are probably having with uh, self-care at home and training. And then, excuse me. And then whenever we meet over Zoom, just like this one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to talk through that questionnaire. And then the other thing that we do in person is we do the FMS. Obviously, I'm not going to FMS them over this. So most of it is going to come from talking to them about like, have they been training currently? Um, maybe I'll have them like stand up and do a few things. Like if I do want to see like how their shoulders are moving, how their hips are moving, whatever. But then they're still going to go like we do the next step for us is we do what's called a personal orientation session. That's in the gym. So they would come in before we write them a program. They sign up. The next step, they come in for their personal orientation. At that sign up sessions when we did the um, goal setting and all that and we did their FMS then they come in for their personal orientation and we're going to teach them the warmups, which is both they get to learn the warmups and we get to see them go through all of these movements from the ground up. So we're learning a ton about their movement and how well they take to coaching and everything through that. Then we run them through a spectrum of movements that are squat, hinge, push, pull, kind of covering upper, lower, um, so that we get a really good idea of exactly what exercises we want to start them with when we write their custom program. And we have, um, some strength standards and stuff that we've built into our process. So we're not, we've, if you're like, Oh, we could do any exercise, you can get hung up on that. So we're just like, Hey, we want to see people have competency with these things before we open the doors to all kinds of stuff. So we look at where they're going to start. So we're going to make a modified version of that for, for online. So they're going to go through that consultation with me. If I need to see them move with some different stuff, which I'm sure I will, but I'll be a little more like, all right, do I want to see this person do like an active straight leg raise angle the camera so we can see it look at shoulder mobility, whatever, but we'll get a base movement understanding um, in that first session. The second session, the coach is going to have the template in hand. They're going to teach them the warm up, and then they're going to walk through some things and start to look at appropriate exercise selection. Because from the call, the part I left out is I will know what equipment they have from that initial one-on-one um, -on -one assessment and goal setting session online. So with that, the coach will have a template that makes sense for the equipment they have. And the first session will be a program walkthrough, but it will also be the coach like deciding, all right, I'm deleting this away. This is the best exercise for them. So then the next time they touch base with that person, it's like, Hey, based on everything we've learned about you so far, here's um, program. And then everything I said before, we could do a full program walkthrough of this. Now you could jump into small group sessions, whatever. So. Okay. Thanks. So yeah. Business as usual. Yeah, pretty much. As, as, it may be a little bit more yeah, I mean, our goal is to do business as usual, as usual, as much as possible on this. The only, the only caveat I'd put on that is like, because everything is, is 
online now is like, we've just got to find ways not to get into like the business side of things, but big, big ways to over deliver from like, well, duh, everyone's doing training right now. And that would even go back and be an expansion on the question earlier of like, and I know that Lewis had to leave, but, um, if you're concerned about people taking your clients, it's like, well, yeah, like the thing is everybody is advertising training right now. Like, so it's just, that is whatever. That's like permission to play. And if that's all that you've, since this has happened, if that's all that you're still taking care of for your clients, it's just, it's not enough right now. And I'm like, I don't want to say it to like stress people out, but think about all the problems they have at home. And it's like, once, if you have the capacity for this, once you have those things covered, like your, your main training, like, all right, they have the program, they know how they're going to be seeing their coach and, or you and, and set up, start to think, what could you put together that's going to solve other problems for them at home? And I would just give you the challenge right now of like every week, every other week, give them another thing. They're like, Oh, Holy shit. Like they're giving us that now too. And you'll, you'll be fine. So I'm liking the, the topless Patrick Stroop down here. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> What's going on? Not much. I'd comment on that one too. It's like most of the time I've had, I've had one or two people kind of jump ship when somebody else is like offering something cheaper. And I guess at the end of the day, like you don't, you don't want really want those kind of people around, you know? Yeah. I mean, if that's all it takes for you to leave. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, not cool. Don't get me wrong. I would be pissed, but at the end of the day, you gotta be like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Like I'll be here when you get back. Yeah, for real. Patrick, why'd you put your shirt back on? I took mine off. <laughs> well, we can't. <laughs> it's it's hot, man. I was just I was sitting outside and it was I was freaking roasting, so I had to come back inside. Right, off. Well, you can leave yourself, Wes. Looking good, man. <laughs> hey, I've got a question, Chris. Fire away. What's going on? Um, because a lot of people, a lot of clients, uh don't believe that they can get or keep uh, strength through doing body weight moves. So what kind of language are you using to tell them it's okay if you don't have stuff at home, we're going to give you a great program and you're going to stay strong. That <laughs> <laughs> you said it. No, I, you, and you know, what's funny is, is there's someone that I respect very, very much in this industry. I would consider to be a massive influence on a lot of my systems. And they did a video this week that was like, um, like three qualities and this isn't a dig at them because I very very much like this person but they did a video that was like three qualities to focus on um, during the shutdown and they opened the video by saying because you know you can't get stronger and, and you're probably going to lose some muscle and I was like like I 100% disagree maybe not get stronger I mean honestly like depending on what type of training you were doing you're probably not going to get stronger it depends on training age like I'm like if I was only training at home with limited things I'm probably not going to get stronger and it's not saying like I'm some super strong person but I have a lot of training under my belt. Uh, but uh, most of the people that we train, like really low training age, yes, they can get stronger. So I disagree with that. And building muscle, like I don't care. Like I've been training a really long time. If I were to shift my diet and I were to change up and just start doing more work, like time under tension, even body weight, yes, you could build muscle. Um, there, are, there are some gymnasts I'd like to introduce you to if, if you don't think that you could build muscle and get lean and get stronger um, body weight. So yeah, but what you said, honestly, it's just hard to explain it to, to people that don't understand it. Yeah. I, but honestly, I think what you said and it's knowing the individual and like, I wouldn't have a cookie cutter response for that. I don't, I personally haven't had any of our clients say that, but um, I'm doing more of like the general telling all of our clients like, Hey, this is what we're doing. This is what's coming. And our coaches are really having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, but they, they come to us with any time there's like an issue with anything. And I've heard nothing of the sorts, but if there was, I'm certain what you just said, our coaches, our coaches would cover. Plus it's like, if you really, it, it wouldn't be someone saying that to you, it wouldn't be coming from a logical place. Oh, of course. Yeah. It, it also wouldn't be where I'd be like, well, you know, the way that science works, I think it's really just being like, well, what makes you think that? Like, and, and just hearing out, like, they're probably really just stressed and frustrated and, you know, there's something else there. So I think the more important thing would be like telling them, well, we can, but Hey, like what's making you say that? And just seeing where that conversation goes and kind of holding their hand a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Tudor, I'm waiting for you, man. It's your time. Uh, Chris, sorry, just one more for me here as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, you probably get that a lot as well that um, clients don't ask you, well, I want to buy some equipment. What should I buy? And they almost like want you to recommend like an at home package to them. How yeah. would you do it? Yeah, it was actually one of the first things that I did as soon as I found out we had to close. One, we, we said, come in, you can take things from the gym because there's no point in us having it here um, except for barbells. So we can still train. <laughs> um, but uh, we did that. And then I said, but you know, understand that some of you are going to want more. I, I posted a list in our members only Facebook group and I put up like a doorway pull up bar. This was like options, not saying go get all this, but I was like a doorway pull up bar um, kettlebells and not like go nuts, but like maybe like one that's like a little bit lighter that you would use for like presses and one that was like a good like swing and squat weight and stuff. Um, an adjustable, again, not all of this, uh, an adjustable dumbbell, like, like the block, like power block, um, bands, an ab wheel, uh, a jump rope. Was there anything else that I wrote? I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. If someone had all that, like, be pretty set, but regardless of what they have, we could be set. But if someone wanted to put together like a good minimalist home, home gym, like not even all of that, like that adjustable dumbbell or the kettlebells, I would say bands are so cheap. Like anyone could pick up bands. Um, a TRX. That was the only other thing. A TRX or jungle gym. That's the only other thing I threw up. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. The, the biggest challenge with all of that right now is finding who's not sold out. So, but, but some of, some people were getting like hung up on that. Like, oh, everyone sold out of it. It's like, cool. Well, you can still train with whatever, whatever we got. So. Fun fact, I found a uh, 75 pound kettlebell at Walmart for 68 bucks. What? <laughs> Free shipping too. Really? You know, what's funny is, is one of our clients ordered like, I think a whole set of dumbbells from Walmart too. So apparently like no one, no one bought out Walmart's fitness equipment. It just wasn't at the top of a uh, trainer's recommendation list for getting stuff. They're gone now, but the big one was still available. So I just bought it to buy it. That's a heck of a price. <laughs> I, I ordered uh, we have a 60 kilo kettlebell at the gym. It's 132 pounds. If you were doing the math and um, <laughs> funny, funny, quick story it got delivered to my house and I'm like so excited for this thing to come. And, uh, I, I get a notification like, Oh, you're, you know, Amazon, your, your delivery, your, your, your delivery has been delivered, whatever. I don't know how they worded that, but <laughs> your shipment's been delivered. And I go running downstairs. Like as soon as I'm freed up, whatever I'm doing and the box is sitting there, I'm like, all right, here we go. And I like bend down to pick up the box and I almost like fell backwards because it was empty. And I was like, what? And so I immediately called Amazon and they were like, well, that's that at the time was through UPS. They were like, well, we'll call UPS. UPS was like chasing down the driver and we know our UPS driver because he's always delivering stuff. So, uh, so he winds up coming back to my house that evening, knocking on the door. And he's like, dude, I, I don't think that box was empty when I dropped it off. I said, all right, man. There's a few it would have been 132 pounds. He was like, oh, no, it was probably empty. <laughs> so the kettlebell must have been – and I was like, it can't be rolling around in your truck. Like, you would have known. So at some point in the delivery, it fell out, and someone probably went to grab it, and they were like, screw it, just send the box. So Amazon sent us another one for free. And that happened to me twice. It happened to us with uh, the, the Beast as well. It didn't come. And then I called them. It said, your item's been delivered. It didn't come. I called them. Another one was there two days later and weeks later, the original one showed up and I called Amazon. They were like, keep it. That's way too much to ship back. So, all right. But yeah, if anyone knows where my original 132 pound kettlebell is, let me know. <laughs> hey, I asked if 
people one fucking favor and you fucking botch it. I don't botch it. Are you on mute? Yeah. Or not. <laughs> What else we got? I, I could have been a little faster on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no, no. You were fast enough. It was good. I got a question. I knew it. I knew it. It's your time. What percentage of your clients did you convert to online? Oh, you're going to make me do math? No, just rough. <laughs> um, I, I think an easier way to answer that, again, there were 118 people on the list. Uh, and I want to say six, maybe seven now for extenuating circumstances got back to us and couldn't. No one was like, this is bullshit. Like, that's not what I signed up for. Not a single person. Um, we had a wedding photographer. She doesn't have work right now. We have uh, a dude that owns an entertainment company and does like a lot of the like DJ, like not even necessarily himself. He DJs sometimes, but at this point he manages a team. But for all of the like nightlife in the area, like his business is on hold and he has no idea when's coming back. So he froze. Um, someone else does like contract work that all that's on on hold. So just a lot of, uh, two salespeople. It might be everybody there. I think there's another, excuse me, one or two in there, but yeah, it was all things that were extenuating circumstances and not saying this is what you would have to do. So for every single one of those people, what we said was like, Hey, cool. Like the last thing we want you to do is be stressed about your job and sitting at home doing nothing. So let's just carry on business as usual. Like no, no, uh, we're not doing this so that we can someday hold it over your head and say, Hey, you owe us from that. Like just, it's the least we can do. Let's keep your training going. And, uh, we know like every single one of them, none of them were brand new. All of them have been with us for years, uh, or at least for an extended period of time. But let us know when they're good to go and we'll fire back up. This will be over at some point, even if it's 2023, this will be over. <laughs> so did you send them their workout? Yeah. Let them, let them jump into our small group. They can follow. Uh, we, we didn't send like, man, putting together the presentation that I just showed you guys and like, and the program, I was getting so hung up on it. And then I sat down with Todd. I was like, you did like, here's all the stuff I'm thinking. And, um, and we were just like, all right, it's just, it's just this because none of our clients get a six day a week program or a five day a week program. Every single one of our clients got a program with a workout A and a workout B and some got a workout A, B and C, but no matter what, what they got was their strength days their conditioning days, which their strength days, as we just talked about power, strength, systems, conditioning, there's conditioning in there, but our clients always have had access to metabolic conditioning for free. So we're still doing those as a live stream in our members only Facebook group. So, um, I guess I'm saying that because yeah, they got their program. They still have access to jump on with the coach and get walked through everything. They can jump in small group sessions and we definitely didn't kick them out of our Facebook group so they can still follow along with, um, the metabolic live streams too. So, and that's like, obviously not what this call is about, but even like we have it written into our contract that if you lose your job, we will cover your membership, no back pay. Like we will cover your membership for as long as it takes you to get another job. No one's ever taken advantage of it. Um, we have had someone go, we were talking about the other day, they might've gone over a year. It was over a year. But, but yeah, over a year. So uh, that's, that's, pretty extreme, but I'll tell you what, as soon as he got his job, like he called me immediately. He's like, fire my membership back up. So had he not been with us, and that's only like, if you can afford to do that. And, and, you know, he trained at kind of an off peak time. Um, it, it, it worked out for a number of different reasons, but had he not done that, he would have gotten this new job. He hadn't been training with us for a year. He'd have excuses of getting settled into the new job and adjusting to his commute and everything else but we were still habit. He did have to adjust the commute, but he was used to coming to the gym. So he was just like, Oh, I guess I train in the evenings now. Seamless. So sorry if you hear my daughter crying in the background, sounds like she's getting into something.
my wife's watching her. She's not roaming free, just if you were concerned. <laughs> <laughs> What else we got? Good. No other questions? So strength faction members go in, get all that. And anyone, like regardless of whether you decide to pick that up or not, I don't care. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, even beyond this, you can email me, chris at beyondstrengthperformance.com. And um, if you uh, just open the email, is there a way to view this afterward? Like the call, Rich? Yeah, it's being recorded. And I'm guessing Todd will post this to Facebook and um, probably email it out too. But yeah, for sure, it'll get out there. At the very least, check our uh, um, Strength Faction Facebook page, but I'm, I'm sure he'll email it out too. Right, Todd? Yep. Cool. And to everyone that's been saying bye and thank you, I know like most of you aren't here because you said bye and thank you, but if you watch this, you're welcome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> It'd suck if I shut up and there's like four people like, all right, not really, but whatever. <laughs> so... Gabriella, were you raising your hand? I was wondering what that what that thing was. No, it was just a little applause emoji. How do you do that? Um, when you go, you go to reactions on the toolbar. Oh, that's new. Yeah, it used to they had it hidden, I think, before, like in the chat, but the new button, yeah. Yeah, now I'm seeing them all over the screen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Only two <laughs> options. Yeah, I know, right? Thumbs up. They, it, it's going to be like Facebook. Like, they need a thumbs down. They need, like, a pissed off face. Like, yeah. That'd be, that'd be real good. You're presenting and just, like, like splattered tomatoes just start showing up on the screen. You're like, oh. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to make you guys just sit here awkwardly and, and stare at me. If there's no more questions, let's call it. And, uh, uh, I'll say one other thing. I'm starting to say my cell phone number is 717-717-514-1425. Um, don't call me. I won't answer. I never answer numbers. I don't know, but text me. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to jump on for a quick call with you. So email me, chris at beyondstrengthperformance.com. Text me, 717-514-1425. And uh, we can talk. Cool. All right, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.